we're going to do a series on ancient rudimental snare drum solos. These are solos that have been played many times throughout history and handed down generation after generation from drummer to drummer. So I'm going to be playing some of the most popular traditional rudimental solos, including Downfall of Paris, Connecticut Halftime, Crazy Army, and 1 and 6 8, Roast Beef. Each one of these solos has different rudiments, so of course there's different technical problems and interpretations. These interpretations go beyond the notes on the page and hopefully by me playing these solos you're going to see a few of those things that we're talking about. Um, the seventh stroke roll, if you go back to the lesson on the seventh stroke roll, this is also in there, we're going to lift each one and they're not actually all going to be in perfect time. That's part of the interpretation, that's the style of this solo. So there's going to be a little lift a little drag, we're going to slow them down just a little bit, put a little pause into it, and some anticipation. So here's a few ways you can play a 7 stroke roll. The first one is what we call a tap 7. That's a 16th note followed by a dotted 8th note with the roll. That's this 7 stroke roll. In time, in perfect time. The other way is to play it as a triplet, starting on the upbeat. Now I'm going to play it in time, and I'll tell you what, I'm going to play the skeleton four times and I'll play the seven stroke roll four times. But I'm going to try to keep the time exact, or as quantized as possible. Now the interpretation we're talking about in this solo is we're going to, put a, we're going to lift the, the roll, but we're also going to put a little pause to it. So I'm going to play the skeleton again, but when I get to the seven stroke roll, I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. So with these seven stroke rolls, there's a little breath and a little pause in them. That's the interpretation for this style. Now you can practice this with a metronome and play it perfectly in time, but I suggest for this interpretation, after you learn it that way, turn the metronome off, put a little pause in the, solos, in the, in the, in the rolls, and that gives the, the solo some soul and some musicality. The 15 stroke roll. In this solo, if you look at it, it's over a count and a half. And if you do the math, that doesn't work. 14 notes plus the tap doesn't fit in a count and a half. That's the skeleton of seven over a count and a half. That's a little confusing. So what I, I like to think of this as a triplet, four sixteenth notes, and then a release. So if I played one triplet, two E and a one. So I'll play that skeleton. All right, now what I want to do is spread that out so that all the notes are even. But I'm still thinking three plus four. And then I just double all those notes and I have my 15 stroke roll over a count and a half. So what you want to do is aim for the downbeat of one on each measure. There really is no downbeat of two. Well, there's a downbeat of two, but you're not playing it. It's somewhere in between a diddle. So don't think of that downbeat of two. Just aim for one, start on the end of one, and then you end on one again. And that's your 15 stroke roll. And that's the correct interpretation for this stop. The strokes that we were explained in an earlier video are very important in this style. They're important in every style, but they're very evident in this style. And this tempo, this solo is meant to be played as a march. So you don't want to play it too fast or too slow. You can learn it slow. You can try and play it fast, but it's really meant to be played at a medium tempo. And some of these strokes are gonna be kind of big. There's a couple patterns that aren't necessarily rudiments. There's one pattern here that's basically a flam paradiddle minus the second note. That's this pattern. All right, so the stroke's real big. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, I wanna make as much contrast as possible between my accents and my taps. And number two, the upstroke prepares you for the next accent 
or a control stroke preparing you for the next tap. So these strokes all prepare you for the stroke that follows it. One of the more confusing parts of this solo for people that are just learning it is the upbeat drags near the end of the solo. I'm going to play that in just a second. But it looks like a single drag tap, but the sticking's a little different because the note following the primary is on the same hand as the primary. And it's also very visual. So check this out. I'm going to play those couple measures. Now, grace notes, the ornaments on all the drags and all the flams. It's very important to make those very clear. And you want the intensity on those, uh, high intensity, but soft. And for them to be very clear and no flat flams. Okay, so now I'm going to perform the downfall of Paris. I'm going to use all the repeats because this is part of the performance. It's an endurance thing and concentration thing. It's quite difficult to keep a high level of concentration, on, especially on all the grace notes, throughout this solo. Notice my interpretation, the way the strokes look. The best way to learn is by watching and imitating.